Now this is amazing stuff. I should be sponsored by these guys, but I'm not. Hey, what's going on my friend? The Chris Lim here from Mixdown Online. This is an exciting video because I'm going to share with you one of the best ways, if not the best in my opinion, to bounce MIDI and audio back in Cubase. But first, if you want to speed up your mixing workflow, I'm going to encourage you to sign up to my free workshop on how to build the perfect mix template. In this workshop, I share with you my whole process on building a mix template, and you'll have access to a free Cubase session that you can base yourself on to create your own mix template. So whether you're using Cubase or not, if you want to speed up your mixing workflow by creating yourself the perfect mix template, click on the link below, sign up and I'm gonna see you in the free workshop. All right, so now let's jump right in and look at this amazing feature to bounce MIDI, audio with plugins and everything back in Cubase. Very cool feature. Now the feature I'm referring to is available on Cubase Artist and Cubase Pro only. And this one is called Render in Place. Okay, so I have in this session, just a quick uh, session for this video only, uh, where I have like uh, some MIDI instruments loaded with some MIDI parts right here, which are these events. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is to bounce those instruments uh, back in Cubase in audio. This is a process that I do all the time. Every time I'm done with production and I'm ready to go and start mixing, I'm going to bounce all MIDI instruments in audio. And the way I'm going to do so is by using render in place. Okay, I'm going to dive a bit deeper in this feature because I talked about this feature before on previous videos, but I only scratched the surface. But now I'm just going to dive a bit deeper. So we're first going to look at MIDI instruments and afterwards I'm going to show you how you can do the same and use render in place with audio events and also external gear which is actually very cool okay so now let's uh, just have a quick listen to uh, this part here okay this is a lead synth right here and on this uh, synth i have uh, let me check if i have any effects here there's a delay for sure that is a send effect that is uh, this one right here with echo boy um, and i also have as an insert on this channel let me check here i have a decapitator which is a saturation plugin okay so what i want to do here is to bounce um, this synth back in audio let's say i'm ready to mix i want to bounce all midi instruments into audio i'm going to select all of those events part of this uh, uh, of this uh, virtual instrument channel and i'm going to click on top under edit go down to render in place and i have two choices i'm going to select render settings i'm going to explain to you why later um, and what i have here is the window the render selection window and this is where everything happens okay so on the top we have mode because uh, as you can see, I have three events that I have selected. What I can do is I can bounce those in audio um, as separated events. So that means that Cubase, if I select this uh, mode, Cubase will bounce all these events as separated audio uh, audio files. Okay, so it's going to create three files in this case. So what I like to do uh, personally is to click and select as one event. So this way Cubase will bounce the MIDI to audio and create only one file instead of three files in this case. So I'm going to select as one event. Then I have processing and this is very important. Um, like you can see, I have on this channel, on this virtual instrument channel, I have a plugin that is the saturation plugin. I want to keep that plugin and keep it for the mixing stage. Okay, so I don't want to bounce um, that MIDI instrument, that sound with the effect. Okay, I want to keep that effect on the new bounced channels. So to be able to achieve this, I need to keep the selection to dry. This is gonna create an audio file on its own audio channel by keeping the inserted plugin, which is very practical. Um, then I'm just gonna go down to properties and we're gonna bounce this. And so I'm, I'm gonna show you how that looks like. And then we'll try out all the other processing modes that we have. But first I just wanna get down here and explain to you what we have for properties. Uh, we have a tell mode, uh, which is set up to 
two seconds. You can set that up to bars and beats if you want to. So I'm going to keep that two seconds. And this is just going to add a tail size of three seconds um, at the moment. Uh, basically, you know, when you bounce an event, as you can tell, it's a specific selection. So I always add up a few seconds after that selection. So if I bounce a sound that has like a, a reverb, a delay, you know, or uh, the sound itself, you know, the sound of the, uh, um, the virtual instrument itself has a tail in the sound, like a pad sound, for example, this is going to take a long time to decay. Um, it's always better to add a tail size. Okay, so this way you're not going to end up with a sound like a bounced audio sound that is going to be cut off at the end. Okay, so that's why I'm adding three seconds. So this way I'm sure um, that I'm going to be good to go. And then we have bit depth that you can choose from a 16 to 64 bit float. I'm going to keep it at 24 like uh, the session is set up at the moment. And then we have a file name uh, where I just, uh, you know, click on use a custom name and I just add a name. So let's uh, name this one lead synth all right and then the path i'm going to keep that to use project audio folder but you could uh, if you want to choose a specific location of your choice and then source event um, this is what's going to happen to the original midi channel in this case or virtual instrument channel and uh, it's going to mute the source events basically okay so all those events are going to be muted but if i want to keep them um, active Unmuted, I'm just going to click on keep source events on change, and that's it. But I'm going to keep that to mute source events. All right, so now let's uh, render this out. All right, so now I have one audio event, a new audio channel, and I have Decapitator that is on the new audio channel. And also the send, the send effect also is put. You know, so all the channel settings, whether I'm using inserts, sends, uh, or the uh, channel strip, you know, everything is kept and transferred on the new audio channel, which is very practical. So this is by using render in place and keeping the processing to dry. If I want to do it the other way around and uh, let's select the same uh, the same media events, go back to render in place and by the way instead of going back to edit, render in place all the time, you know, in render settings, just create yourself a key command. Mine is control R. That's it. Since I use this feature quite a lot, I have myself a key command way faster to get a hold of this very cool feature. Okay, so now this time around, I'm gonna select channel settings. So what that is gonna do, it's gonna bounce all the, you know, all the channel settings with the uh, the virtual instrument sound, you know, everything all together. Okay, so now I have the new channel. If I look under insert, there's nothing because the sound, that saturation has been bounced uh, with the sound itself. Okay, you can hear that saturation going on. It's within the sound itself. Now, the sand effect is intact as it was before. So that has been transferred to the new audio channel. If I go back one step again, let's do that again and open the render selection window. And this time around, I'm gonna click on complete signal path. And this is gonna bounce the sound uh, with the inserts, all the channel settings, uh, um, like, you know, the channel strip, insert and so on. And also the signal path. So in my case, that send effect, which is a delay that is on another channel. It's all gonna be bounced all together on one single file. Okay, so let's try this one. And now we have a blank track, meaning that there's nothing in the sends, nothing in the inserts, everything has been bounced all together. And if we have a listen. So we have the saturation and we also have the send effect, the delay. Okay, so that is another way to do it. Uh, then let's go back one more time. I have like several virtual instruments. I wanna bounce them all together. I can do so, I'm gonna select all of them. Let's go with, you know, all of these channels, go back to the render selection window, and uh, I'm gonna keep them to dry for now. Okay, let's keep them to dry. And uh, if we go down, we have to the name, we have only space for one uh, name, you know? So this is something that you need to consider if you, uh, you, bounce, you decide to bounce several tracks all together, uh, they're gonna have the same name, you know, but different versions. When I do so, I rename those files um, afterwards, which is not that complicated. So uh, what I can do in this case, I can just, you know, VST sense, and that could be like the general name for them. And that's it. So I'm just going to, again, click on render. So there you go. I have all of my virtual instruments bounced on separated tracks 
back in Cubase in a very fast way, okay? And in this case, since I selected dry, as far as processing goes, all of my inserted plugins and the send routing has been kept in place, which is pretty nice. I'm gonna go back one more step again, and uh, let's go back to the render selection window. And this time around, I'm gonna click on channel settings. Let's say I wanna just bounce all those effects with the virtual instruments uh, sounds all together. Doing so, that will give me another option down below, which is called mix down to one audio file. So that can also be practical. Let's say you're in a situation where you're, you're crafting a main synth pad, for example, by using several sounds out of several different uh, virtual instruments. That is a common technique. You craft your sound with different instruments all together, and you end up with that very massive, nice tone and sound that you're gonna use as your main pad, for example. In that case, you can combine all those all together and create only one stereo file and bounce that back into Cubase. So to do so, you just need to click on mix down to one audio file. So that will combine all selected events and bounce that back in Cubase in only one stereo file. And there you go. We have one stereo file that is the combination of all those uh, virtual instruments all together. Okay, so you get the idea. And the cool thing is that you can also do this with audio events. Now note that automatically render in place created a stereo file, okay? Uh, and this is done by default. Render in place will respect the way the channel or the virtual instrument is set up to begin with. So if you're, you're working with a, a virtual instrument that is a stereo instrument, it's gonna create a stereo file automatically. If you're bouncing a mono instrument, it's gonna bounce a mono file. If you're, same for audio, if you're bouncing out of a stereo channel uh, in audio, it's going to bounce it back in stereo. And if you're using render in place uh, on a mono audio channel, it's going to do the same and bounce that in mono back in Cubase. Now we saw what we can do with virtual instruments and render in place, but we can also do the same with audio. Now the way I'm going to work this out usually is if I'm working with an analog gear. That is actually a very good situation to use render in place. So let's say I have uh, this uh, audio that I'm we just bounced and I want to add some EQ. You know, the EQ that I have, the STEM Audio Poltec type EQ that I have here in my rack mount. I'm just going to insert the hardware. And now, by using this, uh, uh, the, the sound is going to go directly to my STEM Audio hardware and come back to Cubase. Um, if you want to know how I do this, I'm going to leave the link on top. I actually made a video uh, specifically on how to, uh, to work with hardware in Cubase. I'm going to link that on top and down below. So, let's have a quick listen. If I bypass it. Okay, there's a significant difference. Everything's a bit more full in, in the bottom end and a bit more brightness also on the sounds. Let's say I love the way it sounds right now and I wanna just bounce that back in audio uh, because I wanna use that hardware on something else. I wanna to commit to the sound that I have. What I'm gonna do is again, use render in place. So this way it's gonna bounce this selection, the, this audio event back in Cubase by printing the hardware into it. So I'm gonna go back into um, render selection, put my selection to channel settings this time, and uh, rename that to synth with EQ. All right, so let's click on render. But before I do so, I'm just gonna select only one part because it's gonna to take too much time to export because it's gonna export in real time since I'm using hardware, okay? so. I'm gonna go back here and uh, click on render. Now I'm rendering only that selected event. So there you go, I have a new track created. The, uh, uh, the synth sounds bounced with the effect, the hardware EQ effect. So now I can uh, reuse that EQ on something else in my session if I want to by committing to the sound and bouncing that over with render in place, which is very practical. So there you go. This is one of my favorite features that we have in Cubase, uh, render in place. Let me know if you're using this feature on your side, and if not, are you planning on using it? 
Leave all your comments and questions down below. Subscribe to the channel. Click that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Share and like if you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to download the free workshop on how to build the perfect mix template. The link is down below. Until next time, my friend, take care and see you.